to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Psalm 8, from verse 4 to 6. What is man? that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him verse 5 says for you have made him a little lower than the angels the word there is god elohim and has crowned him with glory and honor six thou made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands that thou has put all things under his feet Bless our hearts in the name of Jesus. Now, please look up everyone. We have limited time. God is a God of times and seasons. He dwells in light, but his dealings with men is fragmented into times and seasons. Listen carefully. That means for every season, there is what God is doing. Are we together? And the character of his operation is that there are graces and distributions of spiritual possibilities allocated for seasons that follow his word it looks like he's following men but it follows his word is because the men receive his word that's why it follows them the power of god does not follow men it follows his word and if that word is in men it will seem to follow men are we together now so for every season there is what god is doing it is important for you to understand this because this is where many people miss out if good to see you guys let me start using you up front now watch this in 2019 there is a grace and a spiritual allocation are we together now in 2020 watch this it does not cancel this grace in addition to it there is now a supply of another dimension that necessitates that this season reflects the word of God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So God is a God of times and seasons. I'm saying this because um, now I love the body of Christ. But there are people who believe that prophetic words are just a church thing. It is not true. It is not true. Prophetic words guide operations of the spirit in the earth. On the fifth day of the seventh day, God did this. The word of the Lord came. It ties time to it. On the seventh day of the tenth month, the word of the Lord came. Hallelujah. So God is a God of times and seasons. Now, the way God works, please look up again. Globally, there is what God is doing. Ah, my God. I'm seeing a dove resting on five people. One, two, three four five you're my glory the lifter up of my hands please sit down we have to rush now understand this globally there is what the spirit of god is doing across the earth and then territorially there is what god is doing the hand of the lord is upon this fair lady my dear i'm seeing an angel pour oil on you and the lord is saying to tell you he's giving you beauty for ashes he's giving you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness please bring for me the person who will run out by the anointing now just the hand of god is resting on someone i just saw an angel of the lord move don't worry we are going to walk with time will not stay unnecessarily late i saw a grace just one person running by the spirit The Lord is bringing restoration to you, my dear. The Lord is saying he's bringing restoration. Restoration. 
restoration by his spirit hallelujah now watch this because the program of god is based on covenants now watch this this is where the concept of spiritual tribes come tribes are spiritual allocations watch this it's not just a group of people following men no god the way god operates is that he distributes his dimensions by covenant so when he wants a dimension of his spirit to find expression in a generation he will find a man then enter a covenant with that man not old and new testament the covenant becomes the authorized allowance that will be the ordination for the activity of the spirit with respect to that dimension are we together now this is where the concept of tribes coming that means in god's global assignment there is an allocation for people groups spiritual people groups because there are graces that represent the covenant of every tribe and there are times that god is doing something in the earth and he will need a couple of people who are carrying that grace this is where prophetic words come it looks like men of god all over the world are speaking nonsense but it's not so there is an operation of the holy spirit synergizing the dealings of god so when god speaks it is important that we need hallelujah the lord declared to us by his spirit that 2020 is a year of dominion and truly speaking believe me it is not a cliche it is not just a want for a theme it is what god is doing in this season through us as a family of faith write this down please very quickly and then we'll pray our time is gone dominion means sovereign control sovereign control someone is going to begin to prophesy the word of the Lord is upon a people please don't mind me do the things that I'm doing the word of the Lord it's not it's not it's not something that is you see prophecy is not these things that people do it comes from the boil of the spirit the speakings of God through vessels for the edification of the saints now watch this please dominion means sovereign control it means influence dominion means government a system of legislating the will of a man enforcing the will of a king is dominion hallelujah praise the lord so believers are corporately called into the life of dominion it is true that in christ all believers are corporately called into the life of dominion however however there are seasons where the spirit of god seeks to enforce the purposes of christ upon the earth and within a territory and dominion i wrote something down here the dominion of the saints in the earth is the only way the name and the purposes of god will be enthroned in the hearts of men it is through the instrument of dominion that will enforce christ across territories this is very important so when god says it's a year of dominion he means it's a year of influence he means it's a year of control a dimension of spiritual power like never seen before a dimension of the operation of the spirit the investment of heaven upon men like gods upon the earth hallelujah praise the lord over principalities and powers the cry for dominion is a cry to see the fullness of god find expression within a territory this is very important please write this very quickly there are four keys that the Lord gave me that will control the operation of the dominion of the saints, even in this season. Number one, and I've been teaching this a bit as I travel around, is 
the restoration of the ordinances of priesthood priesthood is a dimension that believers do not understand it's more than prayer the priesthood dimension of the saints is a, a lot many people pray but few people understand priesthood and we have insulted our forefathers we have insulted the altars in our regions and instead of us to be able to learn spiritual lessons the operation of darkness has prevailed for many centuries in territories through the mystery of priesthood to the point that even when the custodian of the altars went their presence or their absence did not affect the continuity of those programs it may have been invoked by diabolic powers but it's still a principle the ordinance of priesthood that believers can come to a point where we sustain an intelligence to stand upon our watch like Habakkuk and make things happen upon the earth at a corporate scale not just healing of one head not just prophesying to one person no invoking things from a point and having the effect within a territory that's priesthood a priest does not go around a city but he controls the city a priest will stay in a shrine and manipulate the elements of the supernatural to communicate a language everyone must hear elijah was not in a radio station elijah stayed in a position and commanded that there be no rain it was not prophecy that was pursued so the first key that will establish the dominion of the saints is priesthood it just so happens that the foundation of priesthood for the believer is prayer but that is not the only dimension of priesthood hallelujah jeremiah 33 and verse 3 says call on to me and i will answer not i will respond i will answer i will answer by showing you great and marvelous things which thou knowest not number two let's hurry up very quickly the second key to the dominion of the saints is light the mystery of light that means this year will be a feast of light dimensions of spiritual illumination listen we must trust god in this day to step into a dimension of a, of uncanny spiritual exactitude that means that we understand the operations that are responsible for the results that are desired job 29 the first 11 verse the first 11 verses please let's hurry up job 29 moreover look up please job continued his parable and said to oh that i were in the months past in the days when god preserved me three this is the mystery when his candle shined upon my head and when by his light i walked through darkness we're reading to 11 as i was in the days of my youth when the secret of the lord was upon my tabernacle five when the almighty was yet with me and my children were about me when i washed my steps with butter and the rock poured me out rivers of oil when i went out to the gate through the city when i prepared my seat in the streets the young men look at the effect of access feasting upon these truths the young men saw me and hid themselves the aged arose and stood up nine the princes refrained talking and laid their hand on their mouth the nobles held their peace and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth 11 when the ear heard me then it blessed me and when the eye saw me it gave witness to me dominion the dominion power of light john chapter 1 and verse 5 the bible says the light shineth in darkness the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not there are truths that are responsible for every result in the kingdom please look up i believe that we are going to step into truths that the bible calls the hidden truths that were kept 
and now are revealed by his holy apostles and prophets are truths that have been kept not because the ancient could not access it it was not their season when he gave john the vision he says seal it is for an appointed time in other words there is a generation where this will be unveiled to the light of god number three the third key to our dominion is the power of results productivity results i believe in results it is the end of all arguments result is powerful it compels results compel it is true we must trust god for a grace to step into dimensions of results that defy argument hallelujah exodus chapter 31 we'll read the first five verses the building of the tabernacle the lord spake unto moses saying to see i have called by name bezalel the son of uri the son of hor of the tribe of judah i have filled him with the spirit of god in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship look at this verse 4 to devise cunning works to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in cutting of stones to set them and in carvings of timber to work in all manner of workmanship there is a grace that makes for productivity there is a grace that controls result look at the kind of hard elements this man worked on gold brass timber there was nothing cheap and nothing mediocre yet he had the ability to coordinate them to produce something valuable there is a grace that must come upon the saints in this season to be productive always in dimensions that defy argument productivity number four and this is very very important very very important Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, you see that scripture there. Truly, you can be full of power falsely. It says, truly, I am full of power. But that power came by the Spirit. The ministry of the Holy Spirit in this season must be a guarded treasure in the life of believers please listen to me not just the pursuit of power not just the pursuit of miracles signs and wonders we must restore the fellowship of the spirit this is where this ministry is founded upon the grace of our lord and grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the koinonia the fellowship of the spirit i am full of power not just by prayer but by fellowship with the holy spirit the evidence of his presence in your life known to all and sundry but truly i am full of power by the spirit of the lord the power of the holy ghost is important there is no dominion without power and authority not assumed power not purported power power that is valid and is provable here and now hallelujah it is the manifestation of the power of god commanding strange results in the lives of the saints that will compel the heathen and anyone around to know that there is a god that god in the midst of his people is not present is mighty the Lord in the midst of his people is mighty. The might of God is a dimension that by God's grace we will experience this year. In unprecedented portions. To the point that they looked at Paul and Barabbas and they, 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 they called them Zeus and Hermes. Greek gods. What manner of grace. What manner of spiritual investment. Many people pray but they do not have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. In fact, many people hear God, but they don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. There are three things I know about relating with the Holy Spirit. Number one, 
Intimacy with the Holy Spirit is atmosphere dependent. Your first sacrifice is not to call him. Your first sacrifice is the labor to culture the atmosphere that makes his presence conducive. But the hardest dimension of working with the Holy Spirit, the sacrifice of creating the atmosphere, simulating heaven in your environment to allow the Holy Spirit comfortable. It says, now arise, O God. Solomon was speaking. He says, come to your resting place. Not come to a house I have built. I, I have simulated heaven within a physical structure. Find comfort in it. You can turn your house into a habitation conducive for the Holy Spirit. You can turn your prayer altar, you can turn your bathroom, you can turn anywhere to a place of real fellowship. The presence of God is atmosphere dependent. Number two, you want to walk with the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit only relates with people from a standpoint of brokenness and contriteness. You will never truly walk with the Holy Spirit until you are willing to be broken ever broken not once broken ever broken death walks in you daily that life will come out of it to walk in others brokenness so the atmosphere number two brokenness brokenness nothing i know that attracts the spirit of god to the life of a man like brokenness and contriteness number three the third key to enjoy the ministry of the holy spirit is obedience to his voice and his instructions the holy spirit is an extension of the will of the father through the christ and ignoring and trivializing his instructions will close up the continuity of that lecture that dealing process this is the year that god will speak to you and say oh go on a fast three days drop a sacrifice do this the grace to hear his voice and to be prompt in obeying it intimacy with the holy spirit so dominion is not just an impartation you will need to open up yourself to the ordinances of priesthood you will need to labor in the spirit to access light light enough to shine out any darkness number three you must trust god to be productive productive command results all wise and then number four the ministry of the holy spirit that brings power truly let me tell you god desires like never before to empower the saints never before the things that we are seeing are only bits and pieces they are only tests there are higher dimensions of real graces that are coming these graces are not for churches. These graces are not for cities. These graces are transgenerational. But God is beckoning on men and women who will stay to know him enough. That his presence will be more than gold. His presence will be more than reputation. His presence will be more than career. It takes time to know God. There is no knowing God in a nutshell. It does not happen. You will have to labor and stay. One course in the school of the spirit can take two months. The next course can take six months. You must stay till he's done. Hallelujah. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. And for us as a family of faith, as a global family of faith, it's important for us to heed to these instructions. Because these are instructions that are scriptural and are a reflection of the voice of God. That means that you return and begin to fan your prayer altar to flames. Lord, grant me the grace to pray. I conquer spiritual laziness. No excuses. I pray in season and out of season. Not just give me prayer. Oh God, do this. No, no, no. The kind of prayer that transforms. The kind of prayer that molds you into a newer and superior your version of yourself if your prayer is petition driven you are not doing much in the spirit and then light light will require the labor of study 
The spirit of revelation works when there is an atmosphere of meditation and contemplation. Proverbs 18.1 True desire, a man having separated himself, he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. The spirit of wisdom does not come to busy people. You must be able to isolate yourself. Lord, open my eyes. Show me what the ancient saw. Shakaparo skata. And you are searching. And you are searching. You are sleepy, but you are searching. And then light comes from heaven. A chapter is opened. And you will see something you have always looked at, but never seen. You will stand and run in the strength of that light. And you will watch darkness move. Productivity will require learning. Learning. You must be willing to upgrade your mind. You must be willing to upgrade your intelligence, upgrade your understanding. This is the year to not be embarrassed about your ignorance. When you find an area of ignorance, do not be embarrassed. Stay and insist till it leaves. Hallelujah. I'm going to give us a few books. I had a revelation and I saw four books. And the Lord said, read it and ask the people to read it. I asked Jordan to get it. You can get it from him. Four books that contain very prophetic roadmaps into the season that we are entering as a church for the next 10 years. Number one, the final quest, Rick Joyner. Please write it down. Number two, the call, Rick Joyner. Write it down. Number three, Rediscovering the Kingdom, Dr. Miles Munro. Please write it down. And then number four, Divine Revelation of the Spirit Realm, Mary Catherine Baxter. These four books, I saw them in the spirit. Number one, The Final Quest. Please, I also speak to our global family, do well to get it. Number one, The Final Quest, Rick Joyner. J-O-Y-N-E-R, Rick Joyner. Two, the call the same person very prophetic classic is a road map to guide the church into the seasons that we're entering number three rediscovering the kingdom dr miles monroe late rediscovering the kingdom one of the most concise books i know that introduces the kingdom in an intelligent way and then number four divine revelation of the spirit realm the spirit realm there's divine revelation of heaven, Mary Baxter. There's divine revelation of hell. But there's divine revelation of angels. But divine revelation of the spirit. A rare book. Not many people have it, but I, I'm sure that we should be able to get it. Please write these four books. And by the grace of God, we will walk along these materials um, very intricately as the days. Praise the Lord. Now, please, I like. These are instructions that are unique to our global family. And it's important for us to listen. Every year, we bring forth instructions that help us and to give us a direction of where we are going as a ministry. Um, let me start by truly appreciating the entire koinonia family you will never imagine how far god has taken this ministry and taken what we represent across the earth it is no exaggeration when i say we're a global family god has done great things he's given us a global reach he's given us global honor and we truly truly thank him for that and I appreciate yes go ahead please go ahead I appreciate all across nations regions that have contributed uh, in making this happen taking our teachings you know um, yesterday I was in a meeting and someone just reached out to me with a seed from Saudi Arabia and said someone sent me to give you this and say thank you for changing my life and changing the believers there. I said, can you imagine that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. 
um, the Bible says every house is built by some man but God is the builder of all that means that he supplies the intelligence and the wisdom per season the way that the Lord works with me is that he does not always speak but his word comes um, there are people that God works with them in different ways God's word always comes in seasons and when the word comes it shifts us to dimensions in life and in ministry praise the Lord now um, at, 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 a, at a workforce level during our retreat by God's grace we'll have the opportunity to just deal with some of these things but this year by the grace of God God is granting us the grace still part of the dominion mandate and he's expanding our reach across the globe by the spirit of the living God praise the Lord um, the Lord is expanding us we're looking at um, building teams across six regions and, and I'm happy I'm happy that that our global family is listening by the grace of God these are instructions that have come from God um, of course, we'll continue what we're doing here, but by God's grace, we're building teams so that we can host major meetings in U.S., in U.K., and Canada. It's going to be once every year, beginning from this year. Praise the Lord. And we're also going to strengthen our African reach by the grace of God. A minimum of three nations is granting us the grace. Yes. Praise the Lord. We're kickstarting with South Africa and Ghana. So those in South Africa and Ghana, God is speaking to us. Praise the Lord. Um, now, let me talk a bit about the school of ministry. Please, we're still suspending it for now, and, and it's a very serious reason why we're doing that. Um, you cannot believe the demand. In a particular nation, there are 50 people, 50, a group of 50 people willing to come into the country for the school of ministry. Uh, and the demand that is in various places to establish centers across but um, we're walking by the spirit amen it's easy to think it's expansion but when you go on your own you fail and and l let me say this we are not ashamed to grow we are not ashamed to metamorphose gradually sometimes you have to be careful as you grow because people can put pressure on you and um, if I follow the pressure that people are putting on me, I think we'll establish a branch, a school of ministry everywhere in every state. And then you find out that God will only be in the ones that are consistent with his program. Praise the Lord. And so um, we're still hanging on. We have, to, we have to be very fair on the people. And then we're consulting and coming up with the wisdom strategy on what to do. Now, the third instruction, please listen. This is very, very important. The third instruction is, uh, this is concerning our international guests. We have an average of at least 5 to 20 international guests that come in every week. Um, and it's been a concern that we're not able to see them, we're not able to talk, um, do the things we're doing. So by God's grace... Um, and then also for security reasons, by the grace of God, um, we continue to develop our security outfit. But as we're growing, um, the DSS and the military will continue to demand that we upgrade our security infrastructure to be able to host the kinds of people that we're having and receiving. Um, so because of that and all of that, by God's grace, uh, we're going to start holding... A special time with all our international guests in Abuja is going to be once every month it will not be in Zaria it will be in Abuja hallelujah yes so it's going to be a special time where I will be, meet with the guest myself who we'll have the time to talk teaching sessions and then I can counsel and pray and then they can take their flights and go it will save the rigor uh, you can always come if you want the koinonia experience we're always open but for the specialized sessions and it will be based on registration. It's free, free, not paying anything, but to be able to coordinate the people in teams. Already we have uh, several people. We're building teams across these regions. 
so that we'll be able to host them. I think you should be happy for this. Praise the Lord. So all our guests, I know that we have some of them here today. Um, I, I came in from Lagos this morning and I was surprised to meet someone who was on his way to Zaria. I'm sure he's somewhere here. He came in from Ghana. I don't know if he's a pastor or he's a leader, someone also from Ghana. Okay, I think he's outside. Praise God. And so to that effect, we will, every week we'll continue to announce this is just to open us up. There are a few that will come at a leadership level. But God is really helping us to build structures. He's moving us. And we thank God for what he's doing. It's truly a year of dominion. And we'll see the power and the glory of God uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, for your life, you must insist. Please write out right now, just prophetically, the various areas of your life where you seek to see the power of God manifest this year. We're going to pray. I wanted us to finish on time so that we can... Um, I actually came in from a conference through a meeting and I'm here. Tomorrow I'm back, so we're just trying to gain time very quickly. Please write it down prophetically. This and that and that is the area of my life that I seek to see the power of God manifest. My finances, my marriage, my spiritual life. Please write it down. Write it believing. You're not just obeying a man, you're obeying God. I want to see ministry step into another dimension this year. I want to see the hand of God upon my life in mighty ways. I want to see restoration in my life this year. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. One more time. You are, you are the covenant keeping God. Shalabarusi atakata. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh. written it we're going to pray shortly on it but just one more project nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 20 by god's grace we're going to start building our facility with immediate effect and um, yes we build our zaria facility god has shown us grace he's shown us mercy and then answered i them and said unto them the God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we his servants will arise and build. The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we will arise and build. Praise the Lord. And so please pray every day. Pray, speak over the structure. Lord, we declare you are giving us a place that will be a habitation of your glory. And... Um, Truly, God has been faithful. He's granted us great opportunities. More of this will come. I'm talking to our global family, so I may not go into all of the details. But just for you to know what God is already doing. is a year of dominion. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are we ready to pray? Lay your hands on what you just wrote while you are seated. And I'd like you to give it life. Give it life through the power of prophecy. Give it life in the name of Jesus. Please believe this is a year to believe. Childlike faith, childlike conviction. Shila parus kalabarunda jele pratizikata. Embratos kabaruja de gede balada balada kotos. Pranda salabaratushiata. Shebaratusekete baladaba. Lay your 
your hands and speak upon it. In the name of Jesus, I give you life. In this year of dominion, arise, arise. You will not remain as letters. I speak life to you. In the name of Jesus, outside make sure you are praying. Inside make sure you are praying. dimension lift your voice and declare lord i believe my faith is alive i believe you i believe you i plunge into prophecy i plunge into prophecy i plunge into prophecy may someone pray supernatural manifestations of your word in my life wonder walking dimensions of your grace wonder walking dimensions of your hand receive a fresh baptism of the grace for prayer the spirit of priesthood the ability to stand upon my watch lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray pray inside pray outside pray online in the name of jesus you are praying the grace to pray the grace to be consistent Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lay your hands on your eyes and say eyes open. Open to the mysteries of the kingdom. Open to the revelations of the spirit. Lift your voice and pray that God is able to wash my eyes with eyes out that I may see, that I may see, that I may see. Someone is praying, Lord, open my eyes, open my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things from out of thy law. Open my eyes to the mysteries of dominion. Open my eyes to the mysteries of speed. Open my eyes. Show me the secrets of the kingdom. Show me the wonder-working power of your word.
are you praying open my eyes oh god Light, 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 illumination, illumination. on your head command your mind to open open up to creativity open up to excellence at a global scale at a global scale at a global scale open up to a higher dimension of dominion results by the spirit of god lift your voice and pray going to cry for a deeper dimension of the ministry of the Holy Spirit please listen the Holy Spirit is not an option to the believer the Holy Spirit is not for Pentecostals the Holy Spirit is God's advantage to us I have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he not it he the spirit of truth is come listen he is the only one who truly brings beauty and glory out of our lives. Outside of him, we are not worth much. But when the Holy Spirit invests himself upon your life, he will turn you into a wonder. Did the Bible not say, until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high? Isaiah 32 and verse 15. Then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful vine. And then a fruitful vine be counted for a forest. I like you to pray and say, Holy Spirit, may my life and my environment be conducive for fellowship with you in this season. Intentional fellowship. I call for my environment intentionally. Someone is praying. Don't invite him just for ministry. Don't invite him just for success. Invite him for life. I need you as a matter of life and death. Shalabarada bagato shabrande gani manaramos. Shalabarada la brande gade barakato shalikata.
The thing about the ministry of the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit can wake you up in the night while you are sleeping. My son, wake up. I want to show you the mysteries of your destiny. And if you allow slumber, sleep is a blessing, but slumber is a cause. God does not give slumber. He giveth his beloved sleep. Are we together? Walking with the Holy Spirit requires sensitivity. There are times you are on the road and you can just say, don't enter that car. Stand. Not because the car will have an accident. I want to show you something. Walking with the Holy Ghost requires childlike flexibility. When you become too organized, you will never know him. You will need a measure of, of um, that childlike attitude. The Holy Spirit can ask you to sit down quietly in the place of prayer and just play worship. And for the next 30 minutes, you are like a madman. Do you have the flexibility to allow his ministry manifest? Hallelujah. Many times we do not experience the ministry of the Holy Spirit because we are too conscious of ourselves. Our reputation, I am this, I am that. And sometimes we want him to fit into the mold of our religion. And because of his love, he will make do with the allowance given him. But there can be more. This is a year where it doesn't mean that you just do stupid things in the name of the Holy Spirit. No. But that you will require flexibility. Flexibility. You can be walking and the Holy Spirit will tell you, go to that market woman selling corn and tell her, Mama, pray for me. It doesn't make sense. It may look stupid. You may look too dignified. But if you can submit to the foolishness of spiritual things, that can be the impartation that shifts you to another dimension. Hallelujah. The wind bloweth where it listeth. John 3 and verse 8. You cannot tell where it's going or where it comes. So is one who is led of the spirit. The character of the spirit is like the wind. Sometimes it looks haphazard, but it's achieving what it's achieving. And you will need to sustain that flexibility. We are going to pray for the grace for influence. What is influence? The ability to compel people to buy into your ideology without using force or cruelty is called influence. It's one of God's major kingdom advanced strategy. It takes evangelism and influence for the manifestation, the continuity of God's kingdom advanced program to happen. Hallelujah. There is a grace for influence that can come upon people corporately and they will say, come, let us go to the house of God, to the God of Jacob and he will teach us his ways. They will tell themselves, let us go. That grace, when it comes upon you, comes upon your business, comes upon the works of your hands, it will transform you. You will become a model. You will become a wonder even to yourself. Are you ready to pray that prayer? Lord, turn me into an influence for the sake of your glory. For the sake of your glory. Not to build an empire for myself. But so that as men look at me, I can point them to Jesus. As they look at your life, you can point them to Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Cry from the depth of your heart. give us a few prayer points let's pray a few more and then we're done tonight I want us to corporately cry for this grace for favor please listen please listen please find a way of believing 
that your life will never make substantial progress until the favor of God is upon your head. The wonder of God's favor upon a man, upon an organization, upon a business is a mystery that very few people have understood. Believe me, the fortitude to become the delight of people where no amount of investment channel towards you is perceived as a waste because you have become Dula you have become Hepzibah we are going to pray listen you can tell within a moment that this life is operating just based on hard work and strife and hustling but you can tell when the favor of god picks you the difference is climbing a ladder and entering a lift the energy of the lift is what picks you i know what the favor of god can do I know what the hand of God, the favor of God. Please, the next one or two minutes, find a way of praying from your heart. Look upon us with favor this year. Look upon my family with your favor. This is the year of the favor of the Lord. This is the year, the favor of the Lord. This is the year. Please pray. Shabakatos kabarata. Legabarun satash kabarato zegetesh. Favor upon my head. Upon my destiny, upon my life, my organization, my ministry, favor, covert favor, covert endless favor with God and favor with men. and 35 let me show you what favor can do job 38 canst thou lift up thy voice to the clouds that abundance of water may cover thee next verse can thou send lightning like a messenger that they may go and say to thee here we are you can call lightning to come and it comes you can speak to the cloud and abundance will meet you where you are. 
there are dimensions of favor you must pray the grace to command resources the bible says strong men retain wealth the grace to command the loyalty of nations not men not cities territories lift your voice and pray release upon me oh god that grace release upon me oh god that grace the grace that speaks to the clouds to release abundance the grace that sends the lightnings and they say here we are at the back of God take one last prayer now listen the Bible says let it not be that when you have built houses let it not be that when you are increased in cattle let it not be that when you have all these things you will say my power Yeshua Hamashiach there is something in scripture called the deceitfulness of riches that means wealth can be like a preacher it can preach a sermon to you and redirect your passion redirect your loyalty you are going to pray and say lord in advance I surrender my achievements in advance I surrender the exploits in advance I surrender the name the fame the increase it is for your glory and it remains for your glory as you glorify the Son the Son will bring you glory lift your voice and vow that vow before God. <laughs> Lift your voice and pray as you increase in ministry. I vow that you will be glorified as you increase me in business. I vow that the nations will know you are the doer as you multiply your grace, your wisdom, your power. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Please look up. The applauds of men can be deceptive. They clap for you because you are the one they see. But you must be wise enough and bold enough to let them know that there is one who is mightier than I. There is one who is the basis, the backbone of my life. He is not just your support system. He is the basis for everything that comes. Listen. God in this season is ready to stretch his arms unrestrained to those who are not ashamed to tell the nations if it means to stop clapping for me so you can have the time to clap for him, let it be. By the time you are obsessed with the applauds of men, by the time you are obsessed with a good name, by the time you are obsessed with the mundanity of achievements, in a way and manner that it becomes difficult to let Christ be seen directly. Don't say God knows. Men must know that he is the doer. That's where he is glorified. When men do not know he is the doer, you have robbed the testimony that brings God glory. You must be intentional. Create all kinds of strategies to force men to see God when they see you. They will not see him through you ordinarily. You have to find a way of manipulating your image to reflect Christ listen 
I told you, you've heard me say it many times that many years ago, God spoke to me and said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. He didn't lie. This year from January till December, you must perpetually cry every day and say, Lord, my desire is to be a mirror that when they look at me, they must think about you. If they look at me and think about me, something is wrong. They should look at me and strangely and mysteriously begin to think about you. Galatians 1.24 And they glorified God in me. And they glorified God in me. And they glorified God in me. Apostle, look at this wonderful thing through your life. And then you tell them, I appreciate it. But let the glory go to him. And you are not cheerful. Listen, if giving God the glory does not embarrass you, get ready for surprises. God will do things in your life that will cause you to stand in awe. Because of our various backgrounds and because of many times our upbringing and our experiences, there's usually an obsession to want to be the faces around achievements. I want to, I want everybody to know this came from me. And, and there is a healthy dimension to that, but we must be very careful. The people that God wants to use in these days are people who are not afraid to hide their face so that you will be seen. Can you sacrifice to veil yourself so that you will have no face? And the only face that comes upon your veil is the face of his majesty. That when men see you, by what power and might do you rot this? By what grace do you move in this dimension? And then you hide your face. Oh, I need to know the face behind it. No, it's not as important as the God behind the face. The God behind the face should be the end product, not the face. Hallelujah. Listen, it looks like it's just a simple charge, but it's a very serious issue to God. If there's one thing I know about God, it's his obsession to see that anything that comes from him to you returns glory to him. And it is difficult because we can forget. Hallelujah. Yes. Wow, you did this. Wow, you organized this meeting. Wow, look, this unprecedented dimension of exploits. And sometimes you just enjoy the moment. And you feel you'll be cheated if you invite God into that moment. And you can almost say, God, wait, let me savor the moment. When I'm done, whatever is left, I can call you. And he stands because he gave you a will. When your life becomes a reflection of his majesty. When everything about you becomes an inspiration for people. Not just to follow you, but to follow him. They only follow you because you too, you are on your way to meeting him. Please, this year, make up your mind. Money will not possess my mind. Power will not possess my mind. Achievements will not possess my mind. I remain contrite and broken and humble. While they celebrate it, enjoy it, but don't keep quiet. That is the time to say, ladies and gentlemen, I have something to tell you. You have celebrated me, but I am absolutely nothing without you. The God who represents my possibilities. And then God is glorified. And he's motivated to continue to open greater doors. Many people have short-circuited the continuity of the lifting of God in their lives because they got to a point where it now became shameful to tell the nations without him, I am small, I am nothing. John got it right that I may decrease so that he will increase. It's not self-condemnation, my brothers and my sisters. It does not rob the fact that you are one with him. When the great go on their knees, God rises on his throne. And he can stand and say, who is this? Defying your achievements. Defying your accolades. Defying the applause to let men see me. And he will swear a vow with his integrity. That as far as you are concerned, you will continue to rise for as long as the sun remains in the sky. 
there are covenants that God makes with men. Listen very carefully. Please listen to my last message last year. There are covenants that God makes with men that are not old covenant, new covenants. They are personal covenants that brand his relationship with them by reason of the way they have chosen to walk with him. There are people God has vowed a vow that even if the nations, even if the earth stops producing, they will never beg. It's a covenant. It's not an impartation. It's a covenant. There are people God has vowed a vow with his jealousy that for as long as the earth remains, they will continue to prosper and increase. There are people God has vowed a vow that they will live longer and they will fulfill their days. Listen, it's time to come out of the general relationship with God this year. Move so far with God that he has to look for a name to define your relationship. It no longer just becomes everyone come to God. He says, no, I isolate you. Your sacrifice is worthy of note. Your commitment is worthy of note. Your death, your brokenness, your contriteness, your insistence to see me glorify. The pursuit of friendship with me necessitates that I define my relationship with you. And suddenly he will call you a name that only you can be called. And that becomes... The name, the title of his jealousy upon your life. And he will protect it with his might. Please, the song of surrender must be in your ears. Don't, don't mind all this nonsense you hear people say around and say, oh, no, 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 no. A surrendered life is not a weak life. I've taught you that weakness is one of the most powerful weapons in the realm of the spirit. Weakness is greater than strength. So when you are weak, you are strong. Lord, who am I to do this great thing? If you do not help me, can I ever deceive myself that I can be helped? And you are attracting his strength. Lord, this project that is before me now, do I have the wisdom in my power? I lean not on my own understanding and he's coming. Lord, my academics this year, if you don't arise, will it not look like last year? I surrender everything to you. Hallelujah. Please let's hold hands all over. We're rounding up. This is going to be a very spectacular year. It truly is going to be a year where in spite of the onslaught of darkness, territorially speaking, and over the regions of the north and so, and so forth, God himself will grant the saints grace to prevail. Amen. I'm not a prophet of doom and I don't just come out and speak nonsense. Um, but we're going to pray. I saw an onslaught of darkness across the north a massive multiplication of kidnapping, strategic kidnapping, where they just pick people like chickens. And this one is not just asking for ransom again. It's just destroying people to be able to inflict fear, to discourage the saints, and so on and so forth. And if we do not pray, Especially because of the regions that we're in. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love you. Do not say like Esther, when Mordecai was beckoning on her to speak to the king concerning the threat of her man. She was comfortable for the moment in the palace. And Mordecai sent a message and said, look, young lady, they may destroy us who are outside the gate, but be sure they will come for you too. So don't wait on the day they kidnap your son or your daughter or your wife or your husband or your pastor or a leader. We can stand as a global family of faith and lift up our voice and say, Lord, first we declare a shield and a covering over everyone connected to this family. And then we extend it to the body of Christ 
and especially the body of Christ across this region. We silence wars and rumors of wars. We silence it within our borders. This is not to scare you, but there's no point lying to you. I saw this. I have prayed it and I've been praying it on my own. But it's important that the saints pray. Praise the Lord. It's important. I saw a list of specific people that were being hunted for to be picked. And we must pray. Our city is our business. I told you, when you are born again, you are saved. But when your territory is secured, you are safe. Praise the Lord. We have to pray. Especially because we have people flocking in every week. This is part of the reasons why we are also making adjustments on our programs with visitors. Because the horse is prepared for battle, even though safety is of the Lord. There is a mandate upon us to communicate responsibility, especially in this season. But we are going to pray. Nothing missing, nothing broken. The covenant of peace. Lift your voice and pray. And the God of peace shall give you peace always by all means. And the Lord of peace shall give you peace always by all means. And the Lord of peace shall give us peace always by all means. We fortify our spiritual borders in the name of Jesus. We speak over Zaria, the state. We speak over Jos. We speak over Kano. We speak over Maduguri. We speak over Yola. In the name of Jesus, we speak over the Northeast. We speak over the North Central. We speak over the entire nation. In the name of Jesus, we command peace. We declare peace. We establish peace. We are blessed in our going out. Blessed in our coming in. In the name of Jesus. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest they dip their hands in iniquity. Please pray. It's a sacrifice. This is priesthood. It's a spiritual responsibility. Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day, nor the noisome pestilence, nor the destruction that wasted in noonday. Please hold your hands together. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift her up of my head. points while we are holding our hands we are going to pray over every expansion of the ministry this year and all the projects to the region of the earth here in Nigeria across Africa, UK US, Canada lift your voice, Lord we are taking the fire, we are taking the dimension of the spirit committed to us by the spirit by the spirit Pray for all our teams in these regions. Are you praying? Lift your voice and pray by the Spirit. The Lord gave the word. Great is the company of them that published it. Thank you for access to these regions. Thank you for the ministry of the Spirit. Thank you for signs and wonders. The establishment of the Lordship of the Christ. Thank you for the dimension of your grace committed to us that we are taking to the nations. Ah. 
Christ can now give the nations to you. Oh God, that's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on together I'm praying I'll pray for everyone father in the name of Jesus we thank you for the privilege to represent your purposes you have exalted my life you have exalted this ministry you have made us a praise and a wonder to the nations and father standing and holding hands from Zaria to the ends of the earth. I bring before you a global family. Everyone following online and the millions around the world connected to this grace and to this vision from Asia to Europe to US to the Caribbeans. The angel of your presence has continued to herald that which you are doing in and through our lives. And we thank you. And so, Father, like Paul the Apostle, I bow my knees to you, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I cry and I pray. Dear Lord God Almighty, you have declared that this is our year of dominion. I dedicate this year, I stand as one you have trusted with leadership over this ministry. And I pray, walk wonders in our midst. Walk wonders in our midst. Father, thank you for all that you have done in and through my life and this ministry. But Lord, let us experience your glory at another scale. Your glory in another dimension. Amen. We thank you for the opening of the two lift gates to these regions of the earth. We thank you for the ministry of the spirit, the communication of the life, the power, the majesty of the Christ. We declare with our blood and we declare with our life that the nations must know you. We declare that the nations must see Jesus for who he is. Father, we thank you for this year. Thank you for our building project. You will grant us speed. Thank you for the effectual working of your grace. Thank you for all of the structures you have given and put across this nation. Lord, we thank you for our international guests, our visitors from across the world that you continue to bring. Lord, may this be a season of encounter for them. Mm. Thank you, O oh God, for all of our expansion projects across this nation and across Africa and the ends of the earth. We declare that our desire is to see you lifted. May the angel of your presence go with us. May the grace that backs the covenant go with us. May the throne that commissioned and anointed this vision go with us. Father, I pray for every leader, every worker, that this year we will experience your grace in unprecedented dimensions. No death. No limitations. Amen. We are a family of love and power and grace and impact. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May the angels 
that signify the words you have given to us excel in strength Amen. excel in light Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. now I pray for you everyone here and as many who are following online in the name of Jesus and by the God of the heavens I pray that this year may you experience God in a new way Amen. my first prayer sincerely is for a refiring of your relationship with God. Amen. Step into a deep dimension of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Amen. I pray for your appetite for the word. Amen. You will desire the word even more than your necessary food. Amen. I pray for the spirit of prayer and supplication Amen. that it will rest upon us corporately. Amen. The grace for favor and that for influence. Let it rest upon us. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In advance, I thwart every operation of darkness. Amen. Schemed against our lives. Amen. We are escaped like the fowler before the snare. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I pray for every family represented here. This year is your year of testimonies. I pray for every man of God and every church, every ministry across the globe connected to this grace and this vision. In the name of Jesus, new dimensions. Fresh fire. Genuine kingdom impact. In the name of Jesus. And Father, I declare Take away the sound of mourning. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And all through let it be the sound of rejoicing. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I agree with you. That everything you desire that you wrote down. I release my faith with you. Amen. Even from tonight speedy answers. Amen. Father everyone connected to this grace and this vision. May humility and love be the signature of their lives. May passion for God be your rear guard. May an unprecedented dimension of the anointing be like a helmet upon your head. May speed be like the shoes on your feet. Be graced with fresh oil. And I prophesy upon you the covenant of peace. I declare upon you that the God of peace will give you peace. Always and by all means. In the name of Jesus. Therefore, Father, on my knees tonight and standing before your people, standing before all who are following, I dedicate this year. We truly call it a year of dominion. In the name of the Father, Amen. in the name of the Son, Amen. and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen and amen. Give Jesus praise. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord. Grant me the discipline.